Hey, welcome back to another video for all you geneticists out there. My name is Thomas Wynn, and today I'll be talking about frame shift mutations. So what is a frame shift mutation, you ask? Well, a frame shift mutation occurs when the addition or loss of DNA base changes a gene's reading frame. A reading frame consists of groups of three bases that each code for one amino acid. A frame shift mutation shifts the grouping of these bases and changes the code for amino acids. The resulting protein is usually, but not always, non-functional. But why does this happen? Well, mutations can be caused by a number of things. Some of these causes include environmental factors such as UV radiation from the sun, chemical carcinogens, or even just an error in the copying of DNA during crossover. Hey, we all make mistakes. For example, we have this normal DNA strand reading methionine, tryptophan, phenylalanine, threonine, lysine, glycine, and we have the mutant DNA strand reading methionine, tryptophan, isoleucine, and histidine. From these two sequences, we can tell a lot, such as that the normal strand continues past what is given to us in this problem, and that the mutant strand stops after histidine with a stop code on. Another thing we can tell from the sequence is that the mutation occurred somewhere between the tryptophan and the phenylalanine, because that's where the mutant strand differs from the normal. Now, in order to find out exactly what happened, we must write out all the combinations of mRNA that can code for these amino acids. We can, tell, we can then tell that between tryptophan and phenylalanine, the base pair A was inserted to get isoleucine in the mutant. Now that we have determined that the frame shift mutation was caused by an insertion, the pieces begin to fall into place. We then know that phenylalanine begins with UU, which means isoleucine sequence is AUU. And since histidine begins with a C, Phenylalanine is UUC. Threonine begins with a C, meaning histidine sequence is CAC. Then we have a stop codon which begins with a U, giving threonine the sequence ACU. And because lysine begins with AA, we can deduce that the stop codon is UAA. From here, we have no more information from our mutant strand to use it on our code for the normal strand. So the rest of the base pairs in these amino acids can only be can be any of the options. And so, we find the exact genetic code that codes for our normal and mutant proteins. This was all done by a small frame shift mutation, inserting a single base pair into our normal protein sequence. Thank you.